Anything? No one in the area had seen the kid. Yeah, no, none of them never saw anything out of the order. Any luck finding a dad? Uh, no one answered at his house, and apparently he's taking the day off work. Planned or spur of the moment? Put in for it two weeks ago. We're gonna head to his office, talk to his co-workers. Tommy Dwyer, I, I got a message to see Detective Clark or Sipowitz. Yeah, Andy Sipowitz, John Clark, thanks for coming in. Let's talk back here. Dad had a missing kid's friend. So the missing kid's father's your angle? For now. I don't gotta tell you, you gotta cover these bases in her. No, you don't. Alright, we're gonna have to make this quick. The missing kid and all. No, I know. I was just telling him. I'm retired off the job. Yeah, 20 years highway one. Your son and Scott little friends? Since they were little. You spend time at your apartment? Yeah, he comes over. When was the last time you saw him? Uh, two days ago. Hey, were you thinking he was kidnapped? Uh, we're still trying to put it together. Now, you say he comes over, does that mean uh, your son and Scott are close or they just pals? I'm fairly close, I guess. Any chance they're together now? No. Jake's at school. I, I checked up after I got your message. You're not thinking this is worse than kidnapping, right? Yeah, you know, we're just getting off the ground. What do you know about Scott's family? Uh, the mom's a little rough. I mean, I don't want to say nothing bad against her. Hey, a kid is missing. You got something. Let's hear it. Scott wasn't exactly thrilled with his home wife. Specifically? Kathy isn't around a lot. And her attentions are on other things. You know, having a good time. Scott wanted to live with his dad. Yeah, we heard that. Yeah, but I think he was ready to make the jump. And I think his dad was ready to take him. Scott told you this? He didn't have a dad at home, so he talked to me. Well, he lay out any kind of plan? He said he really wanted to live with his dad, and his dad really wanted to take him. And one day soon, it was going to happen. Have you talked to Jim yet, Scott's dad? Can't find him at home or at work. You got someplace else to look? Scott mentioned he plays a lot of golf at a country club in Riverdale. Yeah, he's going to kidnap his kid and play golf. I'm just telling you what I know, huh? All right, Tommy. Thanks for your time. All right. Look, game did it and bad. Custodial interference. Want a place to look? A week possible, but it might go somewhere else. We're on the air. My downstairs said talk to a detective. Uh, regarding what, sir? I think I have a suspect in your missing child case. How do you know we're working on a missing child case? I monitor the police frequency. And where'd you find the suspect? The internet. These detectives are talking. If there's anything in it, call Andy and John. If not, send them home. Come on in. Your name? Uh, Ted Munns. Have a seat. So, what do you got for us, Ted? These are printouts of 31 emails between myself and an individual who refers to himself as Funtime65, which is reprehensible considering what a foul-minded person he is. Uh, Mr. Munns, we need to ask you to cut to the chase. First of all, I need to tell you about a boy I know, Aaron Nestor. Screen name Aaron21. Aaron is 15 years old. He attends Mount Jefferson High in New Jersey. He's in the theater club, he runs cross country, and he's desperately confused about his sexuality. The thing about Aaron that's so interesting is, he doesn't exist. Mr. Munns, you got about 30 seconds. Aaron Nestor is me. I go into youth-oriented chat rooms, disguised as Aaron, and root out online pedophiles. This is a hobby? I do tech support, so I'm home all day. I'm just making use of my downtime. Have you been successful? There have been arrests? This would be the first. Now, so what do you got, Tech? About a month ago, this fun time lured Aaron into a private chat room and started drilling him about, was he a virgin? Had he ever had a gay experience or fantasized about boys in the locker room? This kind of thing. Until fun time essentially seduced Aaron into full-fledged online sex. You know, all part of your civic duty. If you're going to get past anonymity, you have to gain trust, detective. I didn't have a choice. What makes you think that fun time has anything to do with our case? He's made numerous references to the neighborhood, so I'm almost certain he lives near your missing boy. He says he's guided other boys into their homosexuality by having face-to-face -face meetings, something he's been trying to arrange with Aaron for the past two weeks. And he repeatedly tells Aaron he knows of a place where he can express himself sexually and finally be free from confusion. I mean, he lives here, he's picking up boys here. He's doing two, right? It's worth looking into. Uh, how long would it take to arrange a meeting with this guy? He tells Aaron any place, any time. From what he's mentioned, I gathered he works at home and lives near a video game arcade. So all Aaron has to do is page him. He provided the number two weeks ago, and within half an hour, the meeting's on. What happens when he calls back? You talk like a 15-year-old, raise your voice, what? I've never gotten as far as meeting anyone, so I haven't thought that far ahead. Mr. Munns, if this is some kind of prank, or you're setting somebody up because you got a beef with him, tell us now. Because down the line, I find out you're lying, you're going to jail. Jail? I came here to help. It's the truth. Get a female in any crime or your uniform. Someone with a kid's voice answer the phone when this guy calls back. Page him now. Come with us.
down this aisle, green hat and jacket. I just paste the number again to see if it's our guy. Please, you're coming with us. Hey, I think you got the wrong guy. Yeah? But what's my date of birth doing on your pager? Just say one more thing, you'll be on the ground in handcuffs. Did you come here with him? You know? And then get your butt to school. Sit down, Mr. Bowling. Now I'll stand until one of you thugs tells me what's going on. Hey, what the hell is this? What were you doing at the arcade? I was playing some games, wasting time. You weren't keeping an appointment? No. Now, how do you think we got your pager number? I got no idea. You were uh, good with computers? I design a website, so yeah. What's your uh, handle in the chat rooms? Gandalf 77. What, what, what the hell? You got another name you go by, maybe fun time? No. Volney, if you think all cops are computer illiterate mopes, I'm sorry to tell you there are whole divisions of the department devoted to pouring through computers. They'll quickly prove that your screen name is fun time. All right, so, so what? Were you in the arcade to meet someone named Aaron Nestor? What if I was? And no one told you pedophilia is a crime? What, what do you mean, pedophilia? What are you talking about? I was there to meet a fully grown man. We got printouts of your chats with Aaron. He makes his age clear. It's called age play. It's pretend. Age play, huh? I got fantasies, all right? So do other guys, lots of them. So someone pretends they're a young kid and you hook up. I mean, check your transcripts. This is Aaron, writes like he's 40. His pop references are all forced. His, his personality is, is total cliche. Plus, I made numerous references to age play. You ever chat online with a kid named Scott Long? No, I've never heard of him. Where were you last night? I was home, working. Were you anywhere near First Avenue on 4th Street last night? I was home, working. Prove it. Oh. There's an auto log on my computer that I used to bill clients. That'll say when I was working. We'll need your computer. Hell no. We'll get a subpoena for it. You're sticking around. The father wasn't at the country club and nobody's seen him. One of his golf buddies says he goes fishing locally. Sounds like a hand job. We'll make calls on it. We get port authority on the airports and the bus terminals. And empty on the rails. I made all the calls. How did McDowell and Rita do with his co-workers? Nothing. It's about time to get the aviation check on the rooftops and harbor on the shoreline. As long as the dad's in the wind, we play it like the kid's missing. Nothing more. That doesn't last much longer. Who were you in with? Internet guy. He's half wacky, but claims he's got an alibi. We need a subpoena for his computer. Hey, what's an anti Detective, it's Scott Lowe's father? Okay. Yeah, Detective Supports. Yeah, Mr. Lowe, we need to see you right away. <clears throat> no, we haven't found him yet. Uh, where can we get you? That's fine. He's nearby. He's coming in. Now keep working your guy. 15 squad, Supports speaking. Ah, stick it in your ass. He's ass uniform. Got nothing better to do than that. Uh, Andy, you're the man. You stupid sons of bitches. What do you want? I'm looking for John Irvin. I'm John Irvin. Ah, Alan Walker. I represent your sister Delia regarding your father's estate. You have a minute? Uh, this way. I apologize for just dropping in, but I was in the area and this is informal. Uh, she mentioned someone might come by. Good. Coffee? Uh, yeah, black is fine, thanks. Did she tell you anything else about your father's will? She said it was complicated and you could explain it better than she could. Well, I'll try, but she's right. It is complicated. He wasn't one to plan ahead. On the simple side, after creditors, and there are many, the remainder of the estate will be divided evenly between yourself and Delia, 50-50. What kind of creditors? Well, your father had a 30-year mortgage on the house, of which 10 years was left unpaid, and the property taxes come due next month. I don't know what you plan on doing with the property, but deal you mentioned selling it to offset inheritance taxes, which may be substantial. All right. There are also car payments, outstanding utilities, IRA maintenance fees, and of course the expenses of last illness. Some of these are piddling, others hefty. To be honest, it's messy. I see. First step is to schedule a conference call between you, me, and Delia to pour over the details, make sure we're on the same page. Oh, that's fine, Mr. Walker. Um, when all's said and done, how much do you think we'll owe? Um, I must not have explained myself clearly. You're not going to owe anything. I thought you said numerous creditors. On the negative side. On the plus side, he did have a complete portfolio, and the home and property are substantial assets. It's a healthy estate. How much so? Well, I don't like to give out estimates in case unforeseen debts crop up, but... Conservatively, after taxes, you should come away with about 800000 each. Uh, here's a copy of the will for you, and I'll be in touch regarding the conference call. It's nice to meet you. Uh, you too.
trying to get in touch with you all morning, Mr. Lowe. Where you been? On the golf course. We checked your country club, you weren't there. Well, I wasn't in my country club. I was invited to play Wingfoot in Westchester. Are you always so hard to find? I'd never played Wingfoot before and I wanted some peace, so I turned off my phone. Now I'd like to know how Scott just disappeared under my ex-wife's nose. When's the last time you saw your son? Last Sunday, re regular visit. Can you account for your whereabouts from last night to this morning? What? Why? Because we need to rule you out as a suspect. I didn't take Scott. Then let us rule you out and find who did. Where were you? I, I was out to dinner with a friend and his wife from 8 to 10.30, and then I was home until this morning. I got picked up at 6. Can anyone vouch for you from 10.30 to 6? I was sleeping, which I doubt is what Catherine was doing and probably why we're in this mess. Why aren't you talking to her? What's your beef with your ex-wife? She's untrustworthy. Her focus in life is partying and screwing around. Is that why you divorced? Yes. How'd she get custody? She accused me of being the one who was cheating and going out and... Uh, I blew up in court and I called her a bitch. We had a female judge and that was that. If his mom's irresponsible and out partying, you could argue that he'd need protecting from that. I told you I didn't take Scott. We know what you told us. We're giving you another chance to stay out of jail. What the hell are you talking about, jail? My son is missing. Right, you listen to me, Lo. If you got him, we'll find out and it's serious. But if this was a misunderstanding and we hear that now, it can all go away. We were making progress in family court. I was getting better visitation. I mean, why would I screw that up? Is there anybody else you think we should talk to? Catherine, or drinking buddies, or bartenders, or her scumbag biker mechanic boyfriend. What's his name? All I know is Steve. He's a drunk. They fight all the time, and he smokes around Scott, aggravating his asthma. So does Steve is around a lot? I think he lives there. Anyway, I know it's enough for Scott to hate him. So where is Catherine? Can I speak to her? No, you keep clear of her. Any developments will be in touch, and from now on, keep your cell phone on. Can I go? I'll get Catherine out. Josh Dover's mom. He's in school. She'll need us there. Who's this? Uh, CIT have got into Peter Volney's computer files. They found some kitty porn and evidence of another boy he might have met up with. Josh Dover. We're gonna pick up him and his mom. Meta Boy and Jones are getting the dead. Keep at this Volney. He's still a candidate. You bet. You got news? Yeah. Come on. Up. Who's Steve? What brought him up? Your ex-husband. Who is he? He's a guy I'm seeing. And why didn't you mention him before? What's the big deal? We asked if anybody else had access to the apartment. I have a few things on my mind. How's he get along with your son? It's fine. That's not what we hear. From who? My ex, Jim? And what do you expect? And why would we expect that, Catherine? He's trying to get it on record to use against me in family court to get custody of Scott. So Scott and Steve are best buddies? They're not best buddies. I mean, Steve isn't Scott's dad. Sometimes having him around upsets Scott. Steve wouldn't take him. Steve got a record? No. I don't know. Does he have a key to your apartment? Yeah. And the only reason you didn't mention him is on account of having a lot on your mind, because if we hear anything different, you're back in this room. Part of the custody agreement says that I'm not supposed to have guys living with me. Well, is there anything else you should have told us then that for some reason you didn't? No. Is it clear to you now that it holds back the investigation and it slows up finding your son? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Steve's last name. Danzig. Where we can find him. Steve Danzig? Yeah. We gotta talk to you for a second. About what? Catherine's kid. Yeah. He still hasn't turned up? When's the last time you saw him? A couple of days ago. You been anywhere near their apartment since then? No. Hey, you don't live there? I just stay there sometimes. Well, why not the last two days? Because we're cooling a little. Why? We just are. Uh, I don't know where Scott is. How'd you and Scott get along? Fine. Steve, this kid's been missing since last night. And every minute that he's not found makes it less likely he's safe, which makes our patients get thin for people who aren't honest with us. He wasn't my kind of kid. I wasn't his kind of daddy figure. I don't know where he is. Check Coney Island or the movie theaters. You ever fight with them? He'd yell that I wasn't supposed to be around. I'd ignore him. Eh, still life would be easier with him out of the way. I right, forget it. I'm not talking to you anymore. You got a record? Answer, Steve. I got two assault collars from years ago. Oh, yeah, and since then you've been in anger management, doing yoga, really mellowing out. I quit fighting in bars, which is what those collars were about. Not kidnapping or whatever. A call for yourself last night. Snake bite bite, too. All right, well, you're coming in while we check it out. I gotta get that bike off. Let's go, come on. Can I close my shop? 
Make it fast. When we printed out all the files in this man's computer that related to online chats and emails, we found a lot of correspondence with your son. Regarding sex, is that what you're saying? It's cryptic, so it can be hard to tell. But there is a possibility your son and this man met up. Oh, my God. God. Again, it's just a possibility, but we need to know. Oh, we need to know, too. Thing is, kids are usually more forthright when their parents aren't around, so is it all right if we, uh, we talk to him alone? If Josh was molested, we want to know about it. Well, once we're done, we'll give you a full report. But for now, do we have your permission to talk to him? He's just a kid. It's okay. Philip. All right. Why don't you wait here on the squad? You want to come in, Josh? I want to ask you some questions, okay, sweetie? If you need us, just ask. Love you, son. What's going on? Did I do something wrong? No, Josh. I wanted you to sit down. First thing you should know is you're not in trouble. In fact, you're here because we need your help. Help with what? A boy who's missing. What's his name? Scott Lowe. I, I, I don't know him. But we think he may have spent time online talking to people who do know him. Your screen name's Josh25, right? Mm-hmm. Well, we've been doing some research, and we know that you've been in some private chat rooms with a guy that calls himself Fun Time. That, no, I, I wasn't. I wasn't. Josh, again, you're not in any trouble, and we're not trying to embarrass you. But this boy who's missing might be in danger, and you may be able to help us. But you have to be honest. Fun Time's a screen name for a guy named Peter Volney, and we have him in custody. Did you meet with this man? Not in trouble? Not at all. Did you meet him? Are parents going to hear this? Josh, your parents love you. And they're concerned for you. That's all they care about. Did you meet him? Maybe. At the arcade? What happened when you met him? I don't want to say. Did you go someplace with him? Josh, it's okay. Where'd you go? <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> Finally, my God. Shut up, old man. You don't get any room here. Hey, what are you trying to do? Break my back? Answer our questions straight and short. Nothing else. You got kitty porn on your computer. Little boys. Uh, well, your little friend Aaron sent that to me. I, I didn't go looking for it. Aaron, who you went to meet today? Yeah, which was another reason why I knew he wasn't a kid. Regardless, you're a collar for it. We also talked to Josh Stover. Who? Hey! Keep acting ignorant, you get more. He gave you up. The motel, the sexual assault. You're a collar for that, too. Oh, my God! Okay, okay. I went on record that he had a fake ID and he made the move. Don't, don't, don't hit me again. We want a full statement of what you did with Josh Stover and where we're going to find Scott Lowe. I, I don't know where Scott Lowe is. I never heard of Scott Lowe before today. Where were you last night? I told you I was home working. I told you to check my work log. A computer guy says he's in a fake. I swear, I don't know where he is. I don't know where he is. <laughs> I'm not a kidnapper. Just a child molester. <laughs> person with kids we're not interested in that i don't know where scott low is <laughs> you can beat me till i'm dead on the floor but i can't i can't tell you where he is your statement <laughs> i'm sick like a leaf <laughs> Yeah, it's Detective Sifwitz from the 15 Squad again. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. Please call when you get this message, Mr. Folks. Thank you. Yeah, man. Who's Folks? Right. Night bartender yeah, where thanks. Danzig says he was last night. I can't get in touch with him. Uniform scoured Coney Island. Every playground and arcade in the city. Nothing from aviation, huh? What's he been missing? 20 hours now? Well, he's going for molesting his Josh, kid, but uh, he's no good for Scott Law. How hard you go at him? Hard enough. McDowell and Ortiz getting Josh and his family home? Yeah. So now what? This Volney says the uh, kitty porn on his computer was sent to him by our vigilante Munns. Get him back in. I was going to, Andy. All right, we'll, uh, we'll wait a while and we'll take another crack at this dance sick. I'm getting coffee. 15 squad, take a part. Uh, uh, what was that, uh, that lawyer earlier? Oh, uh, my father's estate. It's very complicated. Probably going to take a while to sort out. Did he have a will? He had a will, but there are 
creditors and taxes and property mixed in. Will didn't take care of that? Uh, apparently he didn't plan sufficiently. So it's going to cost you money? Actually, I should see some money. A decent sum. You leaving here? No, why would you think that? Decent sum. I spoke with my sister, and the complications of his estate could take months to iron out, so for the foreseeable future, I can't afford to go anywhere. Not, not that I'd want to. That was folks. Danzig's alibi didn't pan out. Piece of advice, Steve. When you get a buddy to front an alibi, make sure he's willing to stick to it. Well, now? Well, it took one threat of shutting his bar down. Your pal backed off you being in last night. All right. All right. All right, get set for another lie. No, wrong, Steve. Tell us where the kid is, what the circumstances were, and if we're convinced that you're telling the truth, we might help you come up with a sympathetic angle on why you did it. You fought with him. He took attention away from you. You got pissed and flipped out. That sounds a whole lot better than you're cold-blooded and too dumb to know better. I was with my old girlfriend last night. We're past that, Steve. I was with her all night. I just didn't want Catherine to find out. All right, mystery girl's name. Penny Lappin. Yeah, where she live? 4200 Second Avenue, fourth floor, apartment C. I got her home phone number, her page, her cell. I was with her all night. She'll confirm it. Takes more than an ex-girlfriend. We ordered Chinese at 11. I paid the delivery guy. Penny will tell you the restaurant. You can talk to the guy yourself. You know we'll check this. Oh, I'm being honest. You son of a bitch. Hey, I'm telling the truth. You could have given us this hours ago. I'm hoping me and Catherine could work things out. This wouldn't have helped. Is it not clear to you that a kid is missing? I know that. But you've got to lie. And his mom's got to lie because you're both too thick-headed to understand that every minute that you waste puts him in worse jeopardy. Emergency services called about the missing kid. They want you to respond to a vacant lot in D. Oh, God. They find them? They didn't say. <laughs> what did they say? Just that they wanted you to respond. And you don't ask nothing further? I'm only telling you what I heard. <sighs> It'd just be nice if once today we got a straight answer from somebody. This prick's lying. The, the kid's mom's protecting him and the dad don't care because he's too busy playing golf. This was a kid missing. For all we know, the kid might still be missing. Now, they don't call you to a vacant lot for a visit. Don't you blow smoke up our ass, too. Secure dads, you can get out there. This is going to be lousy. Let's take this and fill this out, right? And get it back to me. Uh, package for you. I left it. You didn't see. All right, any of you heroes want to own up to this? Luckiest man of the year. What's that all about? You mind your own business, because the next guy that says anything about my personal life deals with me in a parking lot. Radio the boss, let him know. Then we notify the mom. I want to see her reaction. The thing squad base. Go ahead, squad. Then we got a positive ID. Could you give us a minute? Kath, I'll make you some tea. How you doing, Catherine? I took some Valium, so I'm better. Coping. There's no easy way to tell you this. We found Scott's body. You found him? Yeah. What happened? He's been shot. Where'd you find him? In a vacant lot a few blocks away. You sure it's him? Should I go look? We can show you a photograph we took of the body, but from the pictures you gave us earlier, we're... Certain it's him. Okay. Catherine, we're gonna have uniform come and safeguard the apartment. We need you to stay out of Scott's room. I'm real tired. All right. You get some rest. We'll talk more later. Yeah, okay. It's bad. Oh, God. Get her to her bedroom. 
She may not remember us being here. We're gonna have to talk to her again later. So, I heard that boy was found dead. Yeah, take a seat. Was it that guy fun time? He didn't do it, no. But, uh... We were able to lock him up for another child he molested. Well, that's great. My first arrest. We got some other questions to ask you, Ted. Do you keep a stash of kitty porn on your computer? Why are you asking? Well, Peter Volney, a fun time. He had kitty porn on his computer and he said it came from you. Now, we checked his emails and confirmed you were the source. I do have some photographs. You realize it's a crime. Now, the only reason I have those photographs is to A, entice would-be pedophiles, and B, gain their trust. Which you also do by online sex. Every photograph I've ever downloaded has been systematically categorized. Site of download, time of download, which I plan to put in a report and present to police so these sick bastards can be arrested. Have you ever been arrested yourself? No. What? Did you forget your public lewdness collar from two years ago? What's going on? Why are you looking into me? You exposed yourself to some kids in Central Park. All I was doing was urinating behind a tree. There wasn't a bathroom around. Now, generally, that's just a summons for public urination. And some kids happened to walk by and the cop wouldn't listen to me. Ted. Have you ever had sexual urges toward children? No, no way. And you've never put your mind for sex? Never. I'm offended that you'd ask. I can't believe this. I can't believe I bothered to help you. Well, we do appreciate it, and we'd like to return the favor by helping you. See, possessing child pornography is a felony, and it can get you jail time. But if you admit that you have wrong feelings toward kids, we could ask the DA for probation with counseling as part of your sentence. But you've got to admit it. I've never touched a child. Never. Well, can you account for your whereabouts from eight last night to this morning? Do you think I had something to do with this boy being killed? When were you last night? At my aunt's house, all night. I will need to talk to her. Well, fine. I've never hurt a child or touched a child. Never. Ever. But you've wanted to. <laughs> do you want our help? Second message, Ms. Lappin. Please call as soon as you can. No answer to work either. I left word. You talk to Catherine Lowe? Wait, that I'm Valium. We'll get her again when she wakes up. What did the guy say who found the body? Uh, can picker. Said he went into set up camp for the night and saw a leg sticking out from under the back. Wasn't buried at all? Anything on canvas? Nothing. I had a couple of apartments with windows facing the vacant lot weren't home. What about Dan Six Alibi? Can't find the girl. We're gonna head back out to canvas those apartments. Give us a night watch. I want everyone to go home and get some rest. We'll go at it fresh in the morning. Go. Uh, anyone eat today? I'm not hungry. Well, neither am I, but we gotta clear our heads. Uh, Disney World. It was fun. Do you love 